All right, thanks for staying with us now. Young people have always played a pivotal role, right, in Nigerian politics, especially in the struggle for independence. Many of the leaders of independence movement were young students when they began their activism. Now, I mean, such as, if you want to list names, Namdi Azikwe, Obafemi Awolowo, and the Antoni Enahoros of our time, right? Now, Enahoro was just 21 years old, for instance, um, when he moved the motion for Nigeria's independence in 1953. Even after independence, young people have continued to play a pivotal role in Nigerian politics. For the um, examples, Yakubu Gowan, who was only 29 years old when he became head of state in 1966, and Isaac Adaka Boro, who fought for the emancipation of the Niger Delta people, um, was in his early 30s when he founded the Niger Delta Volunteer Force. In essence, Nigeria's political history would be incomplete without um, the significant contributions of young people. And now that Nigeria has um, turned 63, we want to discuss the fate of her youth. Um, that's the conversation for today. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero one eight zero three four six six three. I don't want us to talk too much. I wanted to bring up that video. I tell us, uh, Peter, Peter side. If they can quickly just play that video, then I'll bring in our guest. So the point I'm making is that I would like young people. That's why you find that young people today in Nigeria are concentrated in the creative arts. Society is rigged against young people. Right. So they've got to be very careful in this environment. If you look at it, most, most things are, have been. Rules have been put in place, things have been, measures have been put in place. It make it very difficult for young people to succeed. Mm -hmm. When I was young, it was not like that. It's almost as if it, some Nigerians, as they got older, kept on redefining, pulling the rug a, a, along with themselves. Mm -hmm. And the environment that enabled them to come in and succeed, they, they withdrew it. Right. So that today's young people cannot repeat what they did. I am sad that today, no young Nigerian at, at age 33 can begin a bank the way I did. Mm -hmm. Because the rules won't even let him. You understand me? Yeah. You, if, if you have 10 years experience and you come for a, for, for a banking license, they'll throw you out. So the point I'm making is that I would like young people, and that's why you find that young people today in Nigeria are concentrated in the creative arts, in music. All right, so Olakule Sharia is a mentor and executive coach for leaders across the globe as Chief Knowledge Officer of Kenneth Shurion Research and Ideas LLC. His work reinvigorates leaders to embrace what sets them apart in order to maintain personal and professional relevance. And it is always a pleasure to have you, Kumle Shurion, on our set. Thank you. Thank you for always honoring our invitation. Thank you. I enjoy myself <laughs> every not, time. We do not take it for granted. <laughs> I enjoy because myself. In fact, there was nobody else to have this conversation with. Other <laughs> because again, first of all, I see you, even though you are not particularly a youth, you know, but um, your ministry, right, who you are, embodies that you are called to the younger generation. Right. And it's such an apt conversation because, I mean, I remember having a conversation with you last week and we were talking about, you know, how a lot of young people are moving towards the creative sector. Nobody wants to go to school anymore. Everybody just wants to probably sing, act and blow. You know, that's it, right? I mean, so when I now found this video from Atedo Peter Said, he said things around that the society is rigged against young people. He says it's very difficult for young people to succeed. He founded a bank at 33. Any three-year-old cannot find, find it. <laughs> you can't find anything not to talk about a bank, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's almost like as people grew older in his generation, they made it a lot more difficult, right? Stifling the growth of young people. So, I mean, Nigeria is 63, right? And I was just wondering, with everything that is going on, what truly is the faith of her youth? You know, do you see any form of, you know, Anything that can really, really happen for young people in Nigeria amidst all of these things? Yes, I do see. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you for inviting me again. Wow. So it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I enjoy myself every time. I see a lot of hope. Um, but a critical part of that, that, I, that which I see is existential. Uh, it's not that I am 
confident that anybody will give you room, but that I understand the clock of the decade that we are in. And in my conferences as a futurist that predicted in 2018 that the new decade will be about the fading of powers and voices as we have known, and about the rise of powers and voices as we are yet to know. Um, the rise of underdogs, mainly young people, no-name boys and girls rising to new levels of prominence and authority and influence in a way unprecedented. And we're going to see a lot of that. Essentially, when you look at it, what is really wrong is with the current generation of Nigeria's leaders. And, it is, and when I say that, I do not mean the fact of leadership. Because I don't belong to that school of thought that everything starts and ends with on the leadership, right? The followership is key on many levels, particularly when it comes to nation building. At the, at the micro level, it's easier to put everything on leadership. At the macro level, it's too expanded to put everything on less than 1%, less than 1% of the population, right? So if you consider that every person, the people we call leaders today who are aged, old, and we say you should give young people power, they were yesterday's young people. Mm -hmm. As at 1960, there was no old person in power. Absolutely. The old people of 1960, 1950-something, were already defeated by colonialism. It was young people who saw the vistas, who believed in the promise of a new nation, who understood that there are certain rights that our individuality, um, our collective individuality deserves um, as a people, and they began to fight for that, and they got the independence. So everyone in Nigeria's leadership, primarily, over 90% of them were extremely young people. This is what young people did to Nigeria. This is not what old people did to Nigeria. Wow. So let's be clear that it was young people who made this Nigeria, hmm. right? It was young people who took control of Nigeria. So there were no old people resisting them. It was white people resisting them, <laughs> right? And then they fought the white people and won. The old people of the time could not fight. There were very few who understood the fight. When the majority of young people began to come into the stage to fight, right, and they, they were winning, it was predominantly a lot of youth energy. And it took charge. The civilian government that took over from the, from the colonial masters were young. The military junters that followed were young. And every leadership we have experienced from that time were young. Except that these young people then grew to build an organized system. And they just never let power. Hmm. It's not that they put their children there. Because I've also noticed that the children of politicians in Nigeria don't come into the system. Somehow they find it another place. It's, it's protégés and mentees who somehow find their ways there. And then, but that structure has continued. And so what you have is young people who became old remain in power, build their own protégés and mentees, handed over power to them, and they were also young and then old and then contemporaries, and so we have old people today. Mm. The concern, therefore, is that old people have now become the white people of 1960. Mm. So, so oppression now changed color from white to black. What we wanted in 1960 is what we still want now. You call opportunities for people. The attention and resources our individuality deserves. The freedom to dream. The assurance that if you are willing and ready to do the work, there is positive outcome at the end of your efforts. Right? That's what they call the American dream in some other countries. Mm -hmm. Those rights are not to be supposed, supposed to be gifts from human beings to human beings. They are supposed to be existential. Mm -hmm. Every human being should have the right to dream, the freedom to win. That if I play by the rules and I assert myself mm -hmm. at a level intelligently, in a way that doesn't commit, break any law, I should have reward for my impute, right? So that is what we still want now. Right. We call people like Fela, people like, uh, we call them prophets, you see, because they saw it to the future. I don't think they saw it to the future. Um, chi 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 China, um, 
something African China, African China. Mm -hmm. who sang mm -hmm. another song. They mm -hmm. say, oh, this guy saw into the future. No, they sang about what was happening then. What has happened is that this, what they sang about has not changed. As a matter of fact, it has gone worse. So looking back, it looks like they saw into the future. No. They saw their present, complained about their present. And the present still stayed. Stay, and and stay. got more complex. So they now look like prophets who saw the future, right? So that's where we are. So young people today who now desire to be in charge and lead transformation or some form of renaissance are not going to experience that because the people in power will just wish you well and give it to you. We now know the color of power across the globe. Nobody gives you what you deserve. You get what you negotiate and what you negotiate intentionally. Mm. So young people need education. They need education about their dignity, about their honor. The fact that tomorrow is as good as the responsibility we deploy today, that wishes don't turn to good just because human beings, it lives in human beings, that people have to show up at a level of responsibility, think at a level of responsibility, um, and then take responsibility for the outcomes they prefer, right? That will require that we begin to take a second look at the things that we have accepted as normal. So you find, you, you know, there's something that I teach out there that the lifespan of a crisis, particularly in Nigeria, is 90 days. Mm. I said, no matter what you have done, no matter how much gossip is going on, you just need a big border to start happening. And everybody will forget about whatever it is you have done, mm. right? It's so easy to get the attention of young people, seize their energy, That's seize easy. their thoughts, you know, um, there are a lot of things we can be protesting about. There's a lot of conversation we can be having. Young people themselves, you know, respond to some type of the discomfort organized by a few young people themselves, right? One of the biggest problems with SARS was it was a cry without direction. And you keep finding that all over the place at different times. I call it Mobad or you call it, you know. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you just see youth energy that is completely directionless, almost lost. Mm. So... I think education is needed, um, some form of ideological construct that is intentional, right? I'm not sure tonight is the night we can break that down, <laughs> or maybe it's a symposium discussion of, of some sort, but people need to understand that, you know, um, nobody gives you what you deserve. We're not just, young people are not just going to show up, right, and just get everything. There will be resistance. That's just the way it works, right? So the young people of 1960, faced resistance from the colonial master of 1960. The young people of today will face their own resistance. They will face and their the own enemy. new The new face of colonialism. Yes. And, and by that, I'm not making a call to any form of violence. Mm. It's mental weaponry. Human beings have the capacity to imagine anything and to birth it. And if we stay intelligent enough and stay true to the outcomes we want to see, right, we will close the gap with strategy mm. and thinking. That's how things are created. Okay, so you know what? Uh, All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing Nigeria at 63. We're asking, what's the face of her youth? And we have with us Ola Kume Shurim. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp. is right. one 803 I am really, really hoping I can understand what an ideology would look like for the time that we're in around the young people. But let me come to you, Sanzi. Yeah, well, for me... Uh, I'll say there was something you said the last time that I was one of the co-hosts that you were a guest. You talked about the Nigerian dream. That one of the challenges we're experiencing is the fact that there is no, like, how do you know what you want if there is no model or if there is no, like, a vision that unites? And you talked about the American dream, how we know that one life is worth a lot to the American government and they believe America is a land of where dreams come true and whatnot. So in Nigeria, we are obviously lacking that Nigerian dream, right? And so I think that no matter how much we, like part of the challenges we had in NSAS was, okay, we want SAS to go, we want this to go, but then there was still a, a sort of division that, you know, we didn't have. So um, a sort of division or thereabout that we had. So I would like to ask you, right, and maybe this might be a question that will stretch into other things, but if you can just make it brief for the sake of the show, uh, if you were in a place to plan or give an idea or a picture of the ideal Nigerian dream that all of us can align with and pursue this future of a better uh, Nigeria, what would that dream look like? You see, uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's something that I think about a lot. And there are words that play in my 
spirit at different times. Mm -hmm. um, hope, pioneering, spirit, you know, unity. Um, they are not lost on us. But, but, but I, I don't think that we are going to sit in a room and craft um, a dream for Nigeria or some type of ideology. I think we are going to be bold about the pain that we feel. Mm -hmm. and begin to respond to that. You know how they say that it is the person that is well that can donate blood? Mm. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how sincere you are. If you are sick, your blood won't be accepted for donation. Mm -hmm. It's called capacity. You have to be well. But you are sick, and you, you can't get a little to what you can build on that sickness. Like, when the foundation is faulty, what can a building do? Mm -hmm. You know, but the foundation collapse. is faulty, but collapse is <laughs> a matter of time. So I think that we can begin to pay attention to our pain points. I'll tell you some of them. Mm -hmm. One of them, for example, is the mass ignorance of the people. Um, the Nigerian people are, are chronically ignorant of the issues. Please, ignorance is not the absence of academics. Mm -hmm. It's the absence of education. Education is not academics. Okay. The Nigerians have gone to a lot of, there's a lot of schooling going on. There's a lot of classroom energy going on. Mm -hmm. But there's little education. When you are educated, you can do four things. One, you can experience your world. You can experience it deep enough to find, to question it, what you are experiencing. To question it deep enough to find the options that exist in that environment. And to know which of those options to embrace as a matter of supreme urgency. If you can do one, two, three, as long as you can do four, mm -hmm. the whole four, you are not educated. Even at a PhD. If you cannot read your environment, you cannot question what you are reading, you cannot birth options. You see, the difference between a lion in the jungle and mm -hmm. a human being is that we can birth options. You mm. know, if the lion can birth options, he will have shaved. It's not that he can't shave. <laughs> it's not that he can't think up that genius. It's that the capacity to live away from his design is mm -hmm. not available to him. So the lion is going to have a lot of beard till he dies because he can't self-question. Right. He can't say, why do I have this? We can do that as human beings. We can question the experience we are having. The lion cannot. That is why we move. We're all in the jungle before. Mm -hmm. We moved from the jungle. We formed villages. We Civilization. Built, we built cities, mega cities, because we could always question the experience we are having. Right? And then from those questioning, we can bet options. And from those options, right, we can choose the one that is most supreme to focus on because we won't always have it, all the resources mm. to do all that we want to do or that we need to do. So we need to address that. That, for me, is not about sending more people into the schools, right? It's about, you know, so you find that a lot of Americans are not necessarily educated in college. In fact, you have a lot of Americans who did not make it to college, neither did they desire to. That's true. <laughs> it is that once they are done with high school, they are done, mm -hmm. right? But at that level in high school, they understand GDP. They understand jobs. Mm -hmm. They understand per capita income. They understand productivity. They understand all the basic things. And from there, they can, they can run anything. They can run any business. They can sit on a bank. They can, you know, produce anything. They can build capacity. They can create jobs from that point on, right? Mm -hmm. So we are not producing that. That type of education is not by studying mathematics or English language, right? It's about keeping ideas practical and really checking if there's a transfer of clarity, right? Our schools need to think about that so that when people actually go to school, they are actually educated. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that when somebody comes to campaign and is telling you, about jobs, you know what he's saying. Right. The average American, when he's listening to you, campaigning, and you talk about veterans, and you say it the wrong way, you're not going to win that election. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about jobs, and you don't say it the right way, you are not going to win that election. And the guys that are voting for you are not BSc holders, they're not bachelor's degree holders, they're not, mm -hmm. they are not you know, master's degree holders. They are just people who understand everyday issues of contemporary life. Mm -hmm. Enough for them to use the only asset that they have to make their contribution, which is their votes, to do that. So you can have two foolish candidates here in Nigeria, and we will still vote proudly for one. The idea is that we, we miss a lot of, so that even if there's no rigging, 
the chances of evolving the right candidate is still almost zero. Mm. Mm. Because people don't even have the clarity to make a choice between you know what it is good want. and better. Mm. Right? The best of people that I know, some of the best people I know, not all of them, but some of the best people I know, yeah. will make choices between good and bad. That's easy energy. Let's be clear. Where do you want to work? Um, Al-Qaeda camp, Boko Haram camp, or Gigi Bank? Easy call. It's obvious. Who do you want to marry? <laughs> right. An robber or a pastor? Mm. Easy call. Yeah. But let's upgrade that to, that's good and bad. Mm -hmm. Let's move that to good and better. Where do you want to work? Access Bank or GT Bank? Now you have to think. Right. Who do you want to marry? Accountant or lawyer? Now you have to think. Mm -hmm. Because it's a more complex decision. Yes. Right? So it's easier to choose between two fools or to choose between a fool and a wise person. It's more difficult to choose between two wise people. Mm. Right? What is even worse is to... then you now dig deep. You now have, you have to, to have something inside think. you. Tell me, so, something must be resident inside, inside of you to, be able to, to make that choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? But what is even more complex is how the alternatives evolve. Mm. So, if you don't create a system that evolves the right candidates for you, assuming candidacy is your problem, right? What is the power of your vote if you have to choose between four fools? Mm. Right? So, the, the, the candidates come from, from... A basket of fools. From <laughs> a political system, right? So, the system, which is the primaries, mm -hmm. the political party administration that evolves the candidate is more powerful than the vote. Mm. Because right. once the wrong candidate evolves from the, from the primary, primary election, mm -hmm. your vote is already arrested. Mm. Right. It doesn't matter who you are now voting for. Mm -hmm. And if I am really wise power broker, I will take a stake in the two candidates. Mm. I will take a stake in all the four candidates. So that whichever one you choose, you are choosing me. Mm. Because your vote is limited and it's as strong as the candidates available. So what about participation then? You find people are big on voting. They are not big on participating in the electoral process, in the political process itself, where the candidates evolve from. You are taking it from the second base because by the time you are not ready to vote, you are only ready to vote for something that is happening probably too late for you, mm -hmm. which is yeah. that the candidates are chosen already. already so that's a different ball game, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then we have to look at the idea of, when you talk about ideology, mm -hmm. indigenization is a big problem here, right? It's a big problem because in America, mm -hmm. that we want to model, two brothers from the same father and mother are governors in two different states. Mm. Oh, yeah. That is the Bush brothers. Bush, yeah. One was governor in Texas, the other was governor in Florida. That, that can't happen here. Mm -mm. It can't happen yeah, here. You, you, you can't be governor you in Lagos. You your brother cannot be governor of yes. Lagos State. It can't happen here. Because of indigenization. In America, you're either an American or you shut up. Well, in the military sector, yes. interestingly, it happened. Because I have a friend that her father and his brother, they were governors, but on two different yeah. states. Yes, because it was by decree. Mm. It, was, it was by decree, right? The military works by decree. So mm. they could superimpose that. It's not the will of the people. Yeah. If it left to the people, they would not allow somebody from the East to come and be leader over somebody in the West. They don't allow somebody from the West but to come and over somebody in the East. This idea of this in the, because i mean so i was at a i was at a what's it called twitter space yesterday and they asked me if i had one thing i could change you know i said let, the, let us expunge this state of origin you know from any any document you're feeling because again i think again it's it's one of the biggest thing that divides us as a people it keeps you know dividing us but pk because you know with you time is always not our friend you touched on something around educating as in uh, mass ignorance if you want to solve the problem of mass ignorance, what is the best tool? Or what's the best medium to be able to communicate that, you know, uh, probably start to, start to educate people on a mass level? I, I'm not sure you will appreciate some of my thoughts, but <laughs> I think English language is a big problem. Mm. And that's where the problem is. English language as a determinant of progress for a people that are not English. Themselves. No, but we, sorry to cut you, but we are not English. However, we have over 300 ethnic groups. So how else do we unify Those ourselves it, it, if it, not through that English language? No, you can use English language. Mm -hmm. Don't, let's be clear. I didn't okay. say we should not use English language. It should not be a determinant of progress mm. in a country of people, over 300 people who are not Englishmen. In other words, if we say Ligua Franca is the goal, we mm -hmm. need something to unify us. 
right? If we say so, mm -hmm. do I need to be a master of it for us to communicate? Mm -hmm. So a chap, and this is a true life story, sat for WAEC, the school certificate examination. He passed commerce, he passed government, and I think he passed economics. Mm -hmm. He failed English. Now, that looks like ordinary thing. Except that that English that he failed is what he used to pass the three other subjects. Mm -hmm. He used English language to pass commerce. economics, to pass government, uh, to pass commerce. So how come he couldn't pass the English language that he used to pass three other, other subjects? subjects. Yeah. Because when the examiner is testing his paper in English, no matter how much he can speak, no matter how much he can communicate, if you cannot write the difference between a clause and a phrase, or between an adjective or a pronoun, it's not going to pass. Mm. Right? Now, what is the goal of Lequa Franca? Is it communication or sophistication? No, I'm asking. It's communication. I believe it's effective communication. Effective communication, mm -hmm. right? Okay, good. So, so our boy can communicate enough to pass three other subjects. But now you're going to fail him in that subject because he cannot pass the test of technicality. Mm. Right? right. I, I so, see point. if I tell you now that I'm, I'm go to Lagos tomorrow. Don't you understand me? Clearly. Mm -hmm. Right? You understand mm -hmm. me, right? If you throw any Nigerian in any market, anywhere in Nigeria, any Nigerian, mm -hmm. they will buy and they will leave. How do they communicate? If you throw a Chinese man in any market in Nigeria, a Chinese man, he will come here, he will buy, he will sell, and he will leave. If you throw an American in any market in Nigeria, he will buy and he will leave, right? Mm -hmm. How are they communicating? Tomorrow I'm come to you, next week I'm go and then I, I had come and then I call you. You get me, don't you get me? <laughs> Pigeon is not an embarrassment to any people. Pigeon is a proof of a people struggle with an original language, mm. right? So there's Pigeon French, there's mm -hmm. Pigeon Spanish, there's Pigeon English, there's Pigeon Yoruba, there's Pigeon Igbo. They're speaking with every language. Even the British yeah. have their own. They have their own pigeons. The so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the moment we start communicating, mm. we're going to evolve some type of pigeon. And it has happened already. The Yorubas have their own pigeon English. The Igbos have. The, the mm -hmm. people in the, in the Delta, Nether Delta have their own. Mm. The Northerners have their own pigeon English. The Chinese man who comes to Nigeria has his own pigeon English. Mm. But all of us are speaking a form of it. But we meet on the altar of English language and we all communicate and we sell. The problem is that while that is happening in the informal sector mm -hmm. and in areas that doesn't matter, the areas that matter are not legislated. So if I cannot say I'm go, you will not give me a job. If I, not, if I cannot say I am going, you can't give me a job. If I say, please, I'm, I'm in charge mm -hmm. of the situation, I'm a problem. If I come to your house as your daughter's boyfriend and I say, uh, where are you people going to say we are going to church <laughs> tomorrow? You can lose hope instantly <laughs> in that reality, right? The promise of that engagement can end for you. Yeah. Which, which, shush, <laughs> except you are also a shush speaking parent. So, <laughs> sympathetic resonance. You can have hope in the guy. So, I can't even marry the girl of my dreams just because. Now, shush does not change the quality of my thinking. Mm. It doesn't change the strength of my character. Hmm. Just because I can't say shush, you won't give me a job. I can't say church, you won't give me a job. You won't honor me as I deserve. You won't give me the attention my individuality deserves. There's so much you will take away from me. I'm not saying we should drop English language. I'm saying let us reduce its power as right. a determinant of progress. Mm -hmm. That we have to legislate some things, right? Where is it in the world? Some of the most successful people in the world don't speak English at all. At all. Sure. Some of them don't even speak good English for those who try to do so. French people struggle with this. There's Mandarin, the Chinese, struggle with it. Korean. Mandarin, they struggle with it, right? Once you can speak enough to be understood, that's lingua franca. Mm. Lingua franca is not the mastery of another man's language. It's communication in the language we all accept in a form that can be understood, mm. whether it is excellent or not. Mm. So if I say I'm go, people will look down on me. Mm. They will despise me. They've not have even the patience to check the strength of my character or the weight of my thinking. They just judge me like that, right? Mm. We don't need that. So to ourselves, we must be true. Right to begin to say, how do we begin to build from here, such that the Gary seller, a Gary seller in Benin, speaks better grammar than a Chinese professor. Mm. 
Mm. But the Chinese professor with his own Mandarin has made his own shoes, he has built his own plane, mm. he has made his own car, right? Mm. So we have to understand that physics, chemistry, biology, maths are the subjects of development. They make everything, right? Those subjects were learned by powerful nations in their languages. In their languages. The Spanish, the French, the Chinese, you see? So we have to begin to think this way. When we start accepting those kind of constructs, we, are, we give the average Gary seller the mm -hmm. chance to understand GDP. Oh. Now, this is the formal education that I also recommend. I think that English language should not be great, a part of our grading in any school. It should be compulsory subjects, mm -hmm. not to be part of our grade. Meaning mm -hmm. that you can always progress without mastering that language, but speaking a form of it. That's the goal, to be able to understand. Again, we should have English language centers free. If you force a language on me, you can't mm. tell me to pay to learn it. It's not my mm. fault that I'm a DJ woman. It's All not right. my fault. So if you say this is our lingua franca, you have to make it available for me, free of charge, charge. Mm. so that I can learn it at the speed of choice. You see? And then if you expand that real quick, mm. if we have English language centers in every local government, mm -hmm. we can make it compulsory for everybody to pass through that institution, no matter your age. Yeah. But the goal is not to give you a grade, it's to count classroom hours yeah. so that you can speak a form of and it. And just to be able to communicate. To communicate okay. and understand. Sansi, quickly take a comment. <laughs> um, okay, oh, interesting. I, I could listen to him forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Nigeria at 63, the fate of the youth. To me, generally, I do not think that there is any cause to celebrate this independence. Nigeria generally has not been doing well simply because we lack good governance. Since this government took over, this country has not been feeling well. Your guest made mention of Nigeria being sick, and I agree. A youth has no faith and hope in a sick country. There is a saying that says, a fool at 40 is a fool forever. That means Nigeria has been a fool for 23 years? Uh, well, 63 years. <laughs> You've said 23. Um, this is sad. Do your calculation. Nigeria has to be well for hope to be restored to the youth. My name is Daniel Iloway's regular Thank fan. Thank you so much, Daniel. Fiki. So, a fool at 40 is not a fool forever, mm. first of all. There's always hope. Bread mm -hmm. is proof. There's something better mm. and greater to conquer, mm. right? I agree. So, Nigerians can do better. Um, I think that we just need to start having the right conversations. We've been mm -hmm. trying to do that. People say we've spoken a lot. We've spoken about the wrong things a lot. Mm. We are not really having the right conversations. But somehow, I believe that the clock of the universe supports this season. Whether well, we like you know, it or not, yeah, change I, has come. Change will come, definitely. I was just going to say, because, I mean, I can't, I can't stop thinking about what you said. It is the youth that, you know, faced the colonial masters that created what we have today. So what gives if we, young people, decide to say, okay, we want to face our own... Uh, you know, we will not create something worse. So there has to be a better strategy. Yes. And, and we, have to, we, we have to get up the idea yes. that we need young people. Oh, yeah. You know, because young people have been there. Yeah. Right? We need wisdom. We need mm -hmm. Whoever is carrying it, young or old. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Achieve the mission. I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up. PK, <laughs> we shall bring you back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sanzi. Now, before we go, thank I show you. you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. Most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Um, if you missed our quote for today, someone says, um, your guest really nailed our Nigerian problem. I just hope our government will pave way for few youth that have passion to improve and glorify our country by creating an enabling environment for them and stop their method of me, myself, and I uh, that has... Uh, crumbled our country. This is from Mrs. Adeniji from Aja. Thank you so much. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, our society is rigged against young people. They have got to be very careful in this environment. Um, most rules have been put in place to make it very difficult for young people to succeed. Ah, uh, PK didn't have time to, to touch on this, but you know what? We'll bring him next time to continue the conversation. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8pm as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. Thank you.